Hello everybody, welcome back to Book of Kings, where we discuss topics such as history, religion, philosophy, psychology, culture, and more, and the way that they all interact with one another. Don't forget to like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to receive a notification every time I release a new video. Hope you enjoy. The history of the Iranian nation and people is a lengthy and ancient one, spanning the course of over 2,500 years. The early portion of its history, roughly corresponding to its first half, witnessed a thriving civilization which produced great empires such as the Achaemenid or Persian Empire, the Arsacid or Parthian Empire, and the Sasanian or Neo-Persian Empire and in large part had the Zoroastrian religion as the cornerstone of its civilization. However, Iranian civilization would witness a turning point where it would forever be changed from that point on. The Sasanian or Neo-Persian Empire would be engaged in a heated rivalry with their neighbors to the west, the Byzantine Empire. This constant conflict would greatly weaken the two powers opening the door for a new power to rise unbeknownst to them. This new power would be the Arabs to their south, newly united under the banner of Islam. The Muslim Arabs would conquer the Sasanian Empire, as well as much of the Byzantine Empire, therefore bringing an end to that dynasty and bringing its domains under the rule of the Rashidun Caliphate. This caliphate would be short-lived, soon being overthrown by the Umayyad Caliphate. The reign of the Umayyad Caliphate would create much dissatisfaction on part of the Iranian and non-Arab population as a whole due to policies which gave privilege to Arabs over non-Arabs. The Umayyad Caliphate would implement a program of Arabization which included making Arabic the official language of the empire and suppressing the usage of written and spoken Persian at times by force, in government correspondence, and even within the general populace. This would begin a process whereby the Persian language would fade from usage and near extinction and would result in other Iranian languages actually going into extinction. For example, the Horazemian language, spoken in modern-day Uzbekistan, which was closely related to Persian, would die as a language as a result of the Umayyad Caliph ordering the execution of anyone who could read and write Horazemian. The Umayyad Caliphate would also implement a policy of discrimination toward non-Arab Muslims. The Umayyads dominated an empire of primarily non-Muslim Christians and Zoroastrians who were given the status of dhimmis, whereby they would be allowed to practice their faiths with autonomy in exchange for paying the jizya, or poll tax. However, as more and more non-Arab inhabitants of the empire converted to Islam, the Umayyads made conversion increasingly difficult, requiring non-Arabs to formally join an Arab tribe and acquire an Arab patron in order to join the faith. In fact, deviating from Islamic orthodoxy, the Umayyads even required non-Arab converts to continue to pay the jizya required of non-Muslims and barred them from serving in the government. These policies naturally caused discontent among the non-Arab population of the empire, ultimately resulting in the demise and overthrow of the caliphate. The Umayyads would be overthrown by a broad coalition of disaffected non-Arab Muslims, Shia Muslims, non-Muslims, and even Sunni Arab Muslims based in the Khorasan region of Greater Iran corresponding to present-day northeastern Iran and parts of Turkmenistan and Afghanistan. Led by the Persian general Abu Muslim, this revolution would put the Arab Abbasid dynasty in power, signaling the beginning of the Abbasid Caliphate. The Abbasid Caliphate would seek a policy of inclusion among non-Arab Muslims, lessening Arab dominance of the empire. Non-Arab Muslims were no longer required to pay the jizya and were increasingly included in government positions, with Persians playing a significant role in government bureaucracy frequently holding the position of vizier, the highest official under the caliph. Iranians within the caliphate would also play a significant role in religious developments within the Islamic faith. One area of influence would be in the compilation of the hadiths, the recorded sayings and deeds of the Islamic prophet Muhammad, which were compiled during the early Abbasid period, with all six of the canonical books of collected hadiths being compiled by Iranians. 
The improved treatment of the increasing number of Iranian Muslims within the caliphate was not enough to stop its political fragmentation, which had already begun in other regions of the caliphate, and Greater Iran would gain political independence following roughly 200 years of Arab rule, beginning a period known as the Iranian Intermezzo, whereby Iran would be ruled by various native Iranian Muslim dynasties. The first Iranian dynasty during this period would be the Safarid dynasty, based in the Sistan region of southeastern Iran and southwest Afghanistan. The Safarids would rebel against Abbasid rule, overthrowing their Persian governors, the Taherids, conquering most of greater Iran and even coming close to reaching the Abbasid capital of Baghdad. Safarid dominance would be short-lived as they would be defeated and pushed back to their original power base in Sistan by the Samanid dynasty, based in modern-day eastern Uzbekistan. While nominally accepting the religious authority of the Abbasid caliphs as flag-bearers of the Sunni Muslim world, the Samanids would rule the eastern portion of Greater Iran, with territory comprising eastern Iran, Afghanistan, Tajikistan, and much of Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. The western portion of Iran would be dominated by the Buyid dynasty, a Shia dynasty originating from the Dalam region along the coast of the Caspian Sea. In addition to conquering western Iran, the Buyids would go so far as to conquer what was left of the Abbasid Caliphate based in Iraq. The Buyids allowed the Abbasid Caliphs to retain their religious title of Caliph while depriving them of political power, with the Buyids being quietly Shia and not imposing Shiism on the regions they ruled in order to prevent Sunni-Shia tensions. In addition to the dynasties already mentioned, other smaller dynasties of the Iranian Intermezzo period would rule in northwestern Iran, the Caspian coast of Iran, and the Caucasus region, such as the Sajids, Ziyarids, and Salarids. The Iranian Intermezzo period would witness a revival of Iranian culture within the Islamic period, particularly under the Samanid dynasty. It was during this period that we would see a revival of Persian culture whereby the current variant of the Persian language, known as New Persian, commonly referred to as Farsi, would emerge following its previously fading usage in favor of Arabic. The name New Persian is used to distinguish it from the Old Persian spoken during the Achaemenid era and Middle Persian spoken during the Sasanian era. This revived Persian language would spread to Iranian-speaking regions such as Afghanistan and Central Asia, which previously spoke other Iranian languages such as Bactrian and Sogdian. We would also witness a flourishing of literature in both Arabic and later in the revived Persian language amongst poets and scholars such as Rudaki, Ferdowsi, Ibn Sina, and Dagigi. During this period, the Samanids would commission the writing of the epic poem known as the Shahnameh, originally begun by Dagigi, but primarily composed by the renowned poet Ferdowsi. The Shahnameh would chronicle pre-Islamic Iranian history from mythological dynasties and the creation of the world to the historical dynasties which we have previously discussed that ruled Iran prior to the Islamic conquests reconnecting Iran with its ancient past. This rekindled interest in Persian language and culture would be exemplified in the famous declaration by Samanid authorities that, quote unquote, here in this region, the language is Persian and the kings of this realm are Persian kings. In their latter years, the Samanids would face increasing threats to the northern portion of their domain from the Turkic Muslim Karakhanid Empire, with the Karakhanids conquering their territory north of the Oxus River, including their capital of Buhara. Effectively losing hold of their empire, the majority of Samanid territory would be taken over by their governors and former Turkic slave soldiers, the Ghaznavids, based in the city of Ghazni in modern-day Afghanistan. The Ghaznavids would be the first in a series of Turkic dynasties to rule Iran following the Iranian Intermezzo period. Despite being of Turkic origin, the Ghaznavids were heavily Persianized and are considered to be a Persianate dynasty by historians. In fact, it was during the reign of the Ghaznavids that the Shahnameh was completed by Ferdowsi and presented to Ghaznavid Sultan Mahmud of Ghazni. Following the fall of the Samanid Empire, 
Esmail Montasir, the son of the last Samanid king, would attempt to reassert Samanid control over its former lands. During this attempt to reestablish Samanid control, Esmail had requested assistance from the Seljuk Turks, a nomadic Turkic tribe to the north, which had recently converted to Islam through contact with the Samanids. While this attempt would prove unsuccessful and he would inevitably be killed, this would result in the Seljuks becoming involved in the power struggle within the Samanids' former territory. The Seljuks would inevitably go on to defeat the Ghaznavids, Karakhanids, and Buyids, gaining control of the vast majority of Greater Iran, as well as the regions of Iraq, the Levant, and the Anatolian Peninsula, ruling over a vast empire and reasserting Sunni power, particularly with their conquest of the Shia Buyids. As with the Ghaznavids before them, the Seljuks were heavily Persianized and played a significant role in the development of a distinct culture which historians would refer to as the Turco-Persian tradition, which was defined by patronage of Persian culture by rulers of Turkic heritage. Following the fragmentation of the Seljuks' western territories, the Seljuks would be conquered by their former vassals and Turkic slave rulers of the region of Horazem, who would create the Horazemian Empire. Like their predecessors, the Horazemians were also a Sunni Turco-Persian dynasty. The Horazemians would face a new threat from the east with the rise of the Mongols and would soon be conquered by the Mongol Empire. The regions of Greater Iran would face a devastating blow with the Mongol conquests, which would incur mass civilian casualties with the Mongols engaging in widespread massacres within the lands they conquered. Estimates of the deaths within this region would range from as low as 2 million to as high as 10 to 15 million people, or three-fourths of the population. Following the conquest of Genghis Khan and his initial successors, the Mongol Empire would be divided into four different khanates. The majority of Greater Iran would come under the rule of the Il Khanate, with the northern portion of Central Asia coming under the rule of the Chagatai Khanate. The Il Khanate would rule Iran for close to a hundred years, converting to Islam in their later years, before eventually fracturing into multiple smaller states ruled by the Chobanids, the Jalarids, the Injurids, and the Kartids, amongst others. These territories would eventually be united by a Turco-Mongol Muslim conqueror from Central Asia named Timur Lenk, or Tamerlane. Timur would view himself as the heir of Genghis Khan and would establish the Timurid Empire. Not long after Timur's death, the regions of western Iran would break away, coming under the rule of the Turkic Akkoyunlu and Karakoyunlu states. The Akkoyunlu Confederacy would eventually conquer Karakoyunlu. It was in these regions that we would see the rise of a new power which would go on to unite the majority of Greater Iran and is often considered to form the beginning of modern Iranian history. Hope you enjoyed. Talk to you next time. Thank you for watching. This has been another Book of Kings video. Don't forget to like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to receive a notification every time I release a new video.